The great promise of modern transportation used to be aviation, soaring high above the clouds with the precision and ease of driving a car. Back in the day, we were convinced that by the year 2000, flying would be as commonplace as hopping in your trusty old automobile or hopping aboard a train. We had grand visions of atomic-powered planes whisking us across the skies at speeds surpassing a thousand miles an hour with all the comfort and safety one could imagine. We imagined a world where piloting an aircraft would be as simple as driving a shiftless car with advanced electronic systems and safeguards to minimize human error. With the advent of atomic engines, we thought range and speed limitations would become a thing of the past allowing us to traverse vast distances with ease. Electronic airways and landing systems coupled with superior cabin pressurization and anti-icing technology were supposed to eliminate the weather-related delays and dangers that plagued air travel in our time. We dreamt of aircraft equipped with electronic eyes navigating seamlessly through the skies unaffected by the whims of Mother Nature. And let's not forget about the promise of pilotless missiles for air mail and high-priority cargo controlled from ground stations and zipping through the air at speeds that would make our heads spin. We even dared to dream of detachable fuselages interchangeable between different types of aircraft providing door-to-door -door air freight service like never before. But alas, reality had other plans. While we've made incredible advancements in aviation technology from supersonic jets to advanced avionics, many of our wildest predictions remain just that, wild predictions. Atomic-powered planes never took off, and while we've made strides in automation and safety, flying is still far from as simple as driving a car. Sure, we've made air travel safer and more efficient than ever before, but the dream of cruising at speeds exceeding a thousand miles an hour remains just that, a dream. And as for interplanetary travel, well, let's just say we're still working on that one. So while we may not be living in the world of atomic-powered planes and detachable fuselages just yet, who knows what the future holds? After all, we baby boomers are nothing if not eternal optimists. Television, the magic box that brought the world into our living rooms. Back in the day, we had some pretty wild predictions about what television would look like by the time the 2000s rolled along. We imagined a world where third-dimensional color television would be as commonplace as a toaster on the kitchen counter and where watching TV would be an immersive experience like no other. We dreamt of small devices projecting lifelike pictures onto our living room walls, so realistic that they'd seem to come alive right before our eyes. And not only that, but we imagined the room would be filled with the aroma of whatever scene was being shown on the screen a veritable feast for the senses. As for broadcasting, well, we figured that would be a thing of the past. Who in their right mind would listen to a program when they could see it instead? Radio would be relegated to a strictly communications medium with wireless transmission of electronic power, revolutionizing the way we light our homes and power our gadgets. And speaking of gadgets, the telephone would undergo a transformation of its own, evolving from wires to radio waves, and equipped with the visuality of television. Gone would be the days of wondering who's on the other end of the line. Every pedestrian would have their own walking telephone, a nifty little device housed in a wallet-sized kit. But as it turns out, reality had other plans. While we've certainly made some incredible advancements in television technology, from high-definition screens to streaming services, the dream of lifelike, aroma-filled projection TVs never quite materialized. And while radio broadcasting may not have disappeared entirely, it's certainly taken a backseat to the visual delights of television and the Internet. The silver screen is where dreams come alive and stories unfold before our eyes. Back in the day, we had some mighty big ideas about the movie theaters of the future and what they'd look like in the 2000s. We imagined theaters shaped like domes with ceilings and walls curving together like the sky itself. And get this, those surfaces would be the screen. Imagine that sitting in a theater where the action isn't just in front of you, but all around you. Some scenes overhead, some at the sides, and some even on the wall behind you. Talk about an immersive experience. Just imagine watching Jaws on that baby. 
We also dreamt of three-dimensional photography, pictures with depth that would make you feel like you could reach out and touch the world on the screen. And, of course, almost all movies would be in color by then, no more black and white for us. We wanted our films to be as vibrant and lifelike as the world outside. But despite all these advancements, some things would never change. People would still laugh and cry at the same things, and genres like sex and westerns would still have a place in our hearts. After all, some things are timeless, no matter how much technology advances. Now, did any of these predictions come true? Well, not exactly. While we've certainly seen advancements in movie technology from IMAX theaters to 3D films, we're still a far cry from the fully immersive dome-shaped theaters we imagined. And while almost all movies are indeed in color now, there's still something special about the black-and-white classics of yesteryear. But hey, maybe someday... With technology advancing at the speed of light, maybe one day we'll be stepping into the fully immersive theaters where the action surrounds us on all sides. Until then, we'll just have to make do with what we've got and keep dreaming of what's to come. Me? I'll be dreaming of you giving this video a like. What say you make at least one baby boomer's dream come true right now? And while you're at it, try to predict the next prediction. We'll be taking a look at it in the comments. Let's see if you're right. Now, here's a prediction that really took us to the stars, quite literally. Back in the day, we were absolutely convinced that by the turn of the millennium, we'd have our very own man-made planet orbiting the Earth. Yes, you heard me right, a man-made star circling around our little blue marble like a second moon, reflecting sunshine and lighting up the night sky before sunrise and after sunset. This little planet we thought would be the first of many space-faring vessels, serving practical purposes beyond just interplanetary travel. It would be the nose of a step rocket, firing in sections until the final piece achieved the staggering speed of seven miles a second, becoming a satellite of Earth. And boy, did we have big plans for it. We imagined using it as a radar beacon, a reflector for radio signals, and even as a relay for television broadcasts, ensuring that every corner of the globe would be connected like never before. And while the first ship might not be manned, we thought it could harness power from the sun's heat to drive electronic equipment indefinitely, ushering in a new era of technological advancement. But alas, reality had other plans. While we've certainly made incredible strides in space exploration from the moon landing to the Mars rovers, the dream of a man-made planet orbiting the Earth remains just that, a dream. We may not have achieved all our lofty goals by the year 2000, but that doesn't mean we've given up hope. After all, the atomic age is just getting underway, and atomic power promises to revolutionize the way we think about energy. Hopefully one day we'll look up at the night sky and see our very own man-made star shining down on us. A testament to the power of human ingenuity and imagination. Or maybe not. Ah, medicine, the noble pursuit of healing and extending the gift of life. Back in the day, we had some lofty expectations— about where medical science would take us by the 2000s. We envisioned a world where the length of life for both men and women would soar, with women reaching an expectation of nearly 80 and men over 75. And that was just the beginning. We pinned our hopes on the discovery of the cause and cure of cancer, believing that unlocking the mysteries of growth, metabolism, and aging would pave the way for controlling the aging process itself. We were optimistic that with continued research, we'd be able to restrict cancer's attack before 50 more years had passed, even if eradicating it seemed like a daunting task given its many forms. But it wasn't just cancer we were concerned about. We also had our sights set on tackling chronic diseases and even preventing baldness, all through a deeper understanding of growth, aging, and death. And when it came to public health, we believed that advancements in controlling airborne infections like the common cold would make the air as safe from disease spreading as water and food had become in the first half of the century. As far as surgery, well, we thought it would continue to be the fastest moving side of medical science, with the ability to repair bodies damaged by disease, accidents, or heredity, to the point where the lame and the halt would nearly disappear. And when it came to diseases like polio, we were optimistic and they would be stopped well before the turn of the millennium. 
Now, did all these predictions come to pass? Well, not quite. While we've certainly had incredible advancements in medicine, from breakthrough treatments to life-saving surgeries, the quest to conquer diseases like cancer and to extend human life indefinitely remains ongoing. As long as we keep pushing the boundaries of medical science, anything is possible. So there you go. Which of these predictions do you wish came true? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I predict that I'll be seeing you in the near future.